All right, so we have a new, slightly concerning report coming to us in regards to the financial health and weird predicament that Square Enix is currently in. But what I will say first is that these articles we're gonna talk about require a lot of nuance, and unfortunately, one of them from IGN, you know, decided to go the traditional IGN route and do a clickbait headline and then bury the real stuff within the article that they know a lot of people won't read. So before we get into that, if you wanna click the like button and subscribe to stay up to date with Final Fantasy news I would greatly appreciate it there's tons of Final Fantasy stuff coming out in the next few months there's rumored state of play there's the Tokyo Game Show stuff and then of course Rebirth is on the horizon that game will be in our hands relatively soon so if you want to stay up to date with that stuff you can do that here on my channel so moving into this concerning article it's coming to us from two sources Bloomberg as well as IGN now Bloomberg charges to read their articles and I'm not gonna give them my money <laughs> so we're gonna look at the IGN write-up of what exactly is going on here. Now, starting with that headline, which is super clickbaity, they say Square Enix loses nearly $2 billion in value since Final Fantasy 16's release, which you read that headline and you think to yourself, wow, Final Fantasy 16 is a flop. It killed the company. They're never going to recover but there's a lot more that goes into that. So they go on to say that a lot of this has to do with company shares, not just like overall financial revenue. Their shares are down about 30% since June 22nd, which is when 16 released, all the way to September 13th of this year. Now, in regards to sales numbers for Final Fantasy 16, Square Enix has come out and said that the numbers were strong and they were happy with them. But according to IGN's sources, uh, the sales for the game have slowed down considerably, which isn't really shocking. <laughs> Most AAA games tend to do that after the release, they go on a lull. And then here in America, at least, sales tend to pick up in November and December with things like Black Friday and Christmas coming around where people are spending more money, they're buying gifts for family and friends. So video games, console sales, accessories tend to shoot up towards the later end of the year. And I would expect that to happen for Final Fantasy 16 as well. Now, this is where the nuance comes in. Of course, it's buried within the article further on, but they go on to say that this sharp decline in profit Profit is due mostly to games like Marvel's The Avengers and Forspoken, as well as some of the other mobile games, and even a game like Babylon's Fall, which everyone has already forgotten about, which flopped super hard, are also responsible for the predicament that Square is in. It's not just 16's fault. And we'll get to 16 a little bit later, because <laughs> it does play a part to a degree in this situation that Square's in. But those games, and even a game like Final Fantasy VII, The First Soldier, which got shut down a year after its release, are all responsible for Square Enix losing money essentially and when you stop to think about it that's pretty nuts uh, a game like the avengers which came out at the height in popularity of the mcu uh, flopping so hard was kind of unexpected at first because everyone wanted a cool avengers game until they saw what the game was <laughs> it was a microtransaction filled games as a service live service thing which didn't really look all that fun to play and then forspoken which suffered from some pretty terrible marketing really kind of played into that game not performing well either and although I haven't played the game yet from what I've heard from other people and personal anecdotes from friends uh, the game itself isn't really all that bad and the lead character is one of those characters that has a lot of really heartfelt tender character developing moments later on in the game but none of that is shown in the trailers they wanted the trailers to portray this like quirky fish out of water type thing which clearly hurt the game pretty massively. They also go on to say that the root of the problem here could potentially be that a lot of the producers are given full reign over their projects and when you do that a lot of times a project can shift at the drop of a hat which can be bad for the game in the long run or the company and my mind immediately goes to Yoshi P and CBU3 because based on everything we've heard about the development history of 16 Yoshi P was given full reign to make the game he wanted to make with his team. The only prerequisite that Square had was that the game needed to have crystals because that's a theme that's recurring through every Final Fantasy. And when you do that, sometimes that vision is gonna pay off, sometimes it's not, and sometimes it's gonna be very divisive. And that's kind of where 16 is right now. It's a very divisive title that has turned a lot of people off, but it's also garnered a lot of new fans. And one thing we talked about in a previous video is that when you're trying to expand the reach and 
popularity of a franchise, you make changes that in one situation might make sense for the evolution of a franchise, but also you're making changes to try to appeal to a larger audience. And that's what 16 did. And you can argue that it kind of bit them in the butt because a lot of those hardcore turn-based Final Fantasy fans were really turned off by 16's combat mechanics and its slightly open world aesthetics and some of its characters and overall like Game of Thrones-ish medieval fantasy vibe, which is a huge turnoff for a lot of people. So inevitably you're gonna lose part of your fan base when you make choices like that. And I think that's what's happening with 16 at the moment. And again, I don't think the fact that the game is full on action is the reason why so many people were turned off by 16. You're gonna have a lot of people in comment sections across the internet go, oh, this is Square Enix turning their back on turn-based. This is why they're failing. They deserve everything they get. Turn-based is the savior. Everybody wants that. No, <laughs> for Final Fantasy, the natural evolution of that franchise is to go in the direction that not 16 did, but what 7 Remake is currently doing. Because if you ask me, that battle system is damn near perfect. It's the best blend of action while still maintaining its RPG identity. And the RPG stuff in 16, you can argue, is not good. It's an afterthought. It's kind of half-assed. Uh, and most of those RPG mechanics are not integrated into the actual gameplay. It's all action-based. The RPG stuff tends to be the fetch quest side quests, which were really bad, <laughs> in my personal opinion. There were some good ones that paid off story-wise, but most of them were super repetitive. Go here, grab this flower go back to the hideaway, go here, fight this one monster, go back to the hideaway, go here, talk to person A who sends you to talk to person B who then sends you to talk to three other people before you can accomplish your mission and then you go back to the hideaway. <laughs> you know, so it got very repetitive fast and some of that stuff started to leak into the main story stuff later on in 16 which really killed the pacing of that game for me. And I know I sound really negative right now uh, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> I did a review on 16 uh, a little while back and although I'm very proud of that review uh, and I still stand by some of the statements I've made like if you're a Final Fantasy fan to any degree casual or hardcore you should at least play 16 once. I still stand by that but 16 is one of those games where the more I think about it the more I start to dislike it and I find issues with it that are just really big turnoffs for me. On the one hand, I really enjoy the combat, but I thought it was too easy, way too easy, to the point where you're fighting regular enemies and I would just run past them because fighting them wasn't fun anymore. The fetch quests and side quests, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> the characters are great, but the more I think about some of their character developments, some characters in particular hit a character development ceiling very early on in the game and then never really grow from that point forward. Forward. So even someone like me who is usually pretty positive about these things has issues with Final Fantasy 16. But for journalists to come out and try to paint the picture that 16 is the sole reason Square is in the situation it's in is really irresponsible and misleading and honestly poor journalism. And I didn't even go to journalism school. <laughs> but what does this all mean for Square Enix moving forward? Well, it's kind of dicey when you really think about it. So when companies are in situations like this, that normally is not a good thing and it tends to lead to them being bought by another larger company, which very well could happen for Square. Myself and many other people have speculated for years that Sony would be the ones to do it, to buy Square Enix, because they've got a really great history with one another. But in light of recent events with people like Phil Spencer, who is the head of the gaming division at Microsoft, coming into the picture and making an effort to form partnerships with Square Enix to ensure that their games land on Xbox in the future is also pretty big because we're now looking at a situation where if Square truly cannot recover and they're gonna be bought out, it could be Microsoft that does it. Now, the one glimmer of hope here is that because of that Microsoft partnership, the goal going forward is to try and make sure that every big Square game that comes out is multi-platform from day one and not just locked to PlayStation and then later ported to PC. And historically, Square's games have not sold well on Xbox, but a sale is a sale. <laughs> and in this situation, you kind of got to take what you can get. And moving forward, the new CEO of Square Enix, Takashi Kiryu, has said that he wants to restructure the company and focus less on big games and small games but moving forward just focusing on those bigger AAA titles which can be kind of dicey in and of itself because you could have another Avengers or another Forspoken that you pump money into and it just doesn't perform and now you're losing you know tons of money and it's hemorrhaging and that's not good and I'm curious to know what his sales expectations are because the previous CEO he had some really outlandish 
sales expectations for games. So I'm curious to see what uh, Takashi Kiryu deems to be successful other than Final Fantasy 16. So moving forward, there's going to be a lot of pressure on 16 to continue to perform well on its DLC. And moving forward, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is going to have a lot of pressure on its shoulders as well. And there's only so much a console exclusive can do to help bring back your company. So it's a really weird situation. Again, there's a lot of nuance that goes on here, but that's the video. I'm Curious Corduroy. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you guys think of this entire situation? How did you feel about 16 really trying something different and leaving behind the turn-based stuff? Were you satisfied with it? And what do you think moving forward Square can do to try and turn things around? And the last one, do you think somebody, whether it's Sony or Microsoft, will step in and buy the company? I am Curious Corduroy. I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.